So to requeen versus letting your hive raise its own queen. I've done both. I recommend both. <laughs> um, I would say if you're just starting out, if you're real hesitant, um, and if you're more on the bee poor side, so you know you need an ag exemption with six hives and you have exactly six, um, or you're trying to build them up. Um, in those situations, I would say absolutely go buy a mated queen and put it in your hive. Um, so on, on the opposite side of that is you've got people that are a little bit further into beekeeping and they may have more bees than they need already. Um, they may be more, more experienced and, and also more experimental. <laughs> so, so when every hive is precious, it's different. But once you get a few more and you start playing around more, it can be really kind of fun to raise your own queen. Um, but it is an experiment. So the, the downside of raising your own queen is, is for one, there's about a month lag time. <laughs> so it, it takes... You know, it takes a while to not only mature a queen cell, but for that queen to go out and mate, and then for her to come back and start laying eggs. Um, and so this is where the experience comes in, is you have to know that time frame. You absolutely, that's, that's the most important part. Um, most people jump the gun and look in there about eh, three weeks in and say, oh, I don't have a queen. <laughs> so that, that's not necessarily, that's normal. <laughs> It's normal that you wouldn't necessarily see eggs at that point. It's more, it's closer to a month for a lot of them. Um, but yeah, if, if you're looking at it as like a learning experiment, um, absolutely try to raise your own queen, see if it works. If it doesn't work, um, especially if this was say a split that you decided to let raise its own queen, kind of like a walk away split, um, they call them. Well, if it fails, say that virgin queen got eaten by a bird, or you had a little bit of European fowl brood you had in your colony, you didn't know it, and the queen cell didn't survive. Well, guess what? Put them back together. <laughs> You're fine. Um, and the other little bit of concern is that you don't really know the full genetics of that daughter queen. So the bees that, that she, the eggs that she will lay, the bees that she will raise, they really depend on the population of drones in your area. And so if you have a little bit more defensive bees in your area, you're gonna get a more defensive hive of bees. So like I said, if you're, if you're kind of okay with that little bit of risk, that's fine. And guess what? If they are defensive, get a new queen and replace her anyway. So you're, you're kind of, <laughs> you're, you're back to, to square one, but you're not out any more money than if you got, out, got a new queen. Um, and as you stay in an area a while, you'll get an idea, not a perfect idea, but an idea of the genetics in your area. I have some clients' bees that almost every queen they raise, I kind of like. <laughs> they seem to have a little mite resistance. They're pretty docile. And then I have a lot of other areas where almost every queen they raise is a little bit more defensive than I want. Um, and so that's all something to take into account um, as well. So, so it's just, it's personal preference. But like I said, I, I hate to tell people not to play around and, <laughs> and learn for themselves. So that's what I do is once you get confident and you don't worry about losing a few bees, go for it if you want to.